Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about one of the worst types of meniscal tears, one of the uh, 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 dreadful types of meniscal tears, the radial meniscal tears. So the radial meniscal tear can be a meniscal killer if uh, large enough and it sounds like a tabloid headline, a little bit sensationalist, but it's true, right? So let's talk about this third pattern or this, th this third type of the primary patterns of meniscal tears that it's, uh, it's a really uh, a big trouble to, to the patient. So the radial tear, uh, the tear is perpendicular to the articular surface, it's perpendicular to the tibial plateau, and it's also perpendic perpendicular to the meniscus long axis, okay? The tear is a vertical tear, right? But it's not perpendicular, no, it's not parallel to the long axis. It is parallel to the short axis of the meniscus. And that's why the name is radial tear. It, uh, so this is the, when we have to differentiate, to separate the vertical tears, the radial tear is parallel to the short axis and the longitudinal tears they are parallel to the long axis of the meniscus, okay? Uh, the tear, the radial tear, it originates at the inner portion of the meniscus and extends to the periphery of the meniscus. The bad news about the radial tear is that it compromises the circumferential fibers, so that's bad for the meniscus, especially when the tear is big enough, especially when it is a complete radial tear or when the tear goes to the periphery of the meniscus. And so it can lead to a meniscal extrusion and a meniscal insufficiency. I'm gonna talk a little bit more, I'm talking a little bit more about that uh, in, in the future. And there are some situations uh, that can cause these meniscal tears and some specific places of the radial meniscal tears that I'd like to talk to you right now. One of these scenarios is traumatic lesion that occur uh, at the lateral meniscus and uh, with a radial tear in the meniscal body and the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This is, a, this is one scenario. Another one. Also a traumatic scenario, uh, posterior root ligament tear of the lateral meniscus. This is uh, a kind of common with uh, tears of the ACL when it's associated with tears of the anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, be aware of that. Always look for uh, a tear, a, a, a radial tear uh, a, in the lateral meniscus in case of ACL tears because it's not uncommon, right? And by the way, the posterior root ligament tear of the lateral meniscus, um, the literature shows that uh, it can happen uh, in almost or a little bit more than 10% of the ACL tears. It occurs, it occurs with tears of the posterior root ligament of the lateral meniscus. So these two situations are scenarios that occur in young patients. And the other one that I'd like to highlight here is the posterior root ligament tear of the medial meniscus. And that's a degenerative tear. That's a radial tear. Most of the cases are the de degenerative tears. There are uh, like classifications for the lateral, um, uh, posterior root ligaments of the lateral meniscus and also uh, for the medial meniscus, but most of these cases, they are radial tears. I'm going to talk ab more about that uh, in the video about the root ligament tears, but I, I, I can't, I can't talk, I can't let this out of this introductory uh, video about the radial tears, because as I told you before, the w when you get the three basic patterns of meniscal tears, horizontal, longitudinal and radial tears, and you put this, uh, you, you mix these types of tears and you put them in, in, in some specific places or when they have specific fragments, you can uh, mix, you can build almost all the types of meniscal tears. So that's one of them, the 
the tear of the posterior root ligament of the medial meniscus, most of these cases are radial tears, okay? So that's a degenerative tear and it occurs in middle-aged and elderly person. Pers patients, the same demographics of the horizontal uh, meniscal tears. So that's what happens when the patient has a radial, meniscal radial tear. It tears the circumferential fibers. The meniscus can get out of the game instantaneously if the tear is big enough, is long enough, and the meniscus is not able to counteract the hoop stress. So it will overwhelm the osteochondral unit, causing chondral lesions, early osteoarthritis, and subchondral insufficiency fractures, right? So generally speaking, the radial tear, uh, especially the, the large ones, they have a worse prognosis and they deserve uh, a more aggressive treatment if we compare with a horizontal tear or a vertical tear, for example, generally speaking, right? And another tip that I'd like to give you is this one. The meniscus is really in trouble when the tear compromises more than 60 to 70% of the meniscal length on the short axis, okay? Because that's when the circumferential fibers, they, uh, they start to appear. It's in this region here in the middle portion of the meniscus in the short axis, most of the circumferential fibers are located at the periphery of the meniscus and the inner portion of the meniscus, uh, it's a place that there is, there, there, there isn't meniscal, there, there, there aren't uh, circumferential fibers here. So if, we, if the patient has just a small radial tear, for example, the orthopedic surgeon can just uh, perform a, a, a partial meniscectomy here, and that's okay because the circumferential fibers are preserved. The problem is when the tear is large enough and it, it, and it gets the circumferential fibers. So in cases like that, the surgeon has to think about other treatments as uh, meniscal repair, meniscal suture, because otherwise the meniscal the meniscal function will be compromised okay so that's it for this first video about the radial meniscal tears i will continue in the next video talking about how we can see the the uh, uh the meniscal the radial meniscal tear on the mri of the knee the basics of that and that's it uh have a great day and see you in the next video